Awo, shalom. Ras tefarin, eh? Ras yadinos tefarin, eh? And we'll continue with our 16th uh, sabbatical Rastafari Sabbath studies. And this is Be Shalach in the Hebrew and Be Lekek Gizeh Bamarin, according to the Revised Amharic Bible of Kedamawi Haile Selassie, of Haile Selassie first. So we're continuing with this. Well, as we said, we're going to first. Um, just retrograde a little bit before we progress, before we move forward. Because we're here in Exodus chapter 13, verse 17, 18, 19, we touched on in this, in this brief portion right here. And this is some of the notes in case you didn't get it from the last portion. Try to take down the notes now because we're going to have to clear we're going to have to clear the board. Mm -hmm. And we want to deal with um, another aspect of this. We actually had to make a couple of notes ourselves. Um, one is on the Exodus matrix, the opening of the matrix. We touched briefly here on the Passover common and Planet X or Nibiru. We want to go into a little more detail on that as well as connecting the seven cow cycle of Genesis to Exodus, or the creation in seven days to the Passover, you understand, which is the seventh, the Passover is the seventh part of that particular great cycle, that grand cycle. And then we want to touch on 2012. Is it one day or seven? Is 2012 one day? You know, people expect, is it December 21st, 2012? Boom, everything happens that one day, or are we moving into a period of seven? A period of seven. You understand? A period of seven, perhaps even maybe a period of 14. You understand? But be that as it may, we'll leave that for, for, for then, and we're going to clear this. We're going to clear this right here, and let's clear this and start off and start off fresh. Because we're speaking about something very, very important. And we're going to speak about now is the Exodus Matrix. You understand? The Exodus Matrix. Yeah, everybody talks about Exodus. But what a lot of folks don't even talk about is that the Bible speaks about, you know, um, the Matrix. Everybody talks about the Matrix. But what a lot of folks don't recognize is the Scripture because erroneously they've been lied to and deceived to believe, you understand, the liars and deceivers out there who have already gone before, you understand, they said that the Antichrist will come before Christ. And before the King of Kings revealed himself, there were many Antichrists that went forward. And what they did was put out false Christian teachings and false Judaic teachings, you understand, and, and mixed and mixed fruit. You understand where they spoke some things true, but then racially they twisted it and they lied about other aspects. And some things they could not show you from archaeology because that would have totally debunked and disproved their white supremacist theories. And this is one reason why when people say, well, how come they haven't found a single this, a single that? They did find a lot of stuff, but a lot of that stuff they had to suppress some I would assume they also destroyed. But be that as it may, the truth still will spring from the earth. Um, so this is the RSS Rastafari Sabbatical Study number, um, number 16. We're in, we're in the, the 16th, the 16th uh, portion, the 16th uh, uh, weekly Orit uh, Nebab or Torah portion reading. So this is number... 16 and Bamarinya, we call it Be Le E E Gize. Be Le E E Gize. In the time that he let go. In other words, in the time that Pharaoh, you understand, that Pharaoh, the federal government of Egypt, you understand, and the individualized, the head, the figurehead decided that these Israelites, these Hebrews really, but they were called Hebrews, they definitely wasn't called Jews. This just a point of order. 
it wasn't called Jews. You hear a lot about that, the Exodus and the Jews and Jews and, 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 and Passover. But if you read the story in, in a good Bible, you know, pretty accurate Bible, you read that they were called Hebrews. The first qualifier of who they were were Hebrews, Hebrews. And in ancient Egypt, there's a class of priests that are known as the Hebrews, the Hebrews. We'll get into a little more of that detail, but um, Gerald Macy did some wonderful work in some of his tombs, the volumes that he did on ancient Egypt, uh, um, Book of the Beginning, um, Natural Genesis, and Ancient Egypt, Light of, Light of the World. But what we're going to touch on right here is the Exodus Matrix and the opening of the Matrix. So let's call it Exodus. Exodus, right, the opening of the matrix. Now, first of all, what is a matrix? And where is matrix found in the Bible? From a, a cursory a cursory investigation, that means just a basic general investigation, not getting into all the details, we find that there's the Hebrew matrix, right? Ethiopically, we call it the Mahitan, the Mahitan, the Mahitan, right? Or the Mahitan. Um, Exodus chapter 13, verses 12, verse 15, and verse 19, this very chapter, so we... When we, when we was reminded of this, when the Holy Spirit reminded us of this, we said, let's do this now. Now is a good time to um, touch on this. And in Numbers chapter 3, verses 12, and Numbers chapter um, 18, verse 15. So we have matrix in the Bible is five times. And that's significant. That, that's interesting, and that is significant. So... Matrix means, matrix, I'm going to simplify this because people might want to like spook you out and mystify it, so forth and so on. Matrix means womb. That's what matrix means. Matrix means womb. The basic meaning of the word matrix is womb. I mean, you can look this up, look this up for yourself, the, you know, um, in a good, in a good, um, uh, Webster's Collegiate Dictionary that has the etymological brackets and go in the etymological brackets, you get the root right there, then you get the connotation of the word as well. In fact, I might just bring my dictionary and just, you know, since we're starting out on this particular subject matter, let's go into some of the detail. Let's go into some of the detail of this matrix. Matrix, okay. Matrix, we say the simple meaning of it, the direct meaning of it. Matrix means womb. But let's see what um, Mr. Webster, what Mr. Webster says. You understand what Mr. Webster says. We're not just relying or we're not deep ending on Webster, although many of you all at this present stage may have to, you understand, but still, the Webster with the etymological brackets, at least you could compare with other languages. Here, matrix, um, matrix from late Latin means womb. It means a public register, origin. So it means womb. It's a public register and its origin. So let's, 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 womb is the basic one. Let's put a semicolon here. Put public register, public reg, register, so register, and it says origin. Yeah, origin, right? Origin. So that's the Late, late Latin, then it's derived from Latin breeding animal, a breeding animal, an animal which breeds, um, derived from matter, 
matter, M-A-T-E-R. What do words sound in power, brothers and sisters? Basic kindergarten, words sound power. Matter, mada, mata, mada, matter, and mother. Then um, it says matris, matris with an S instead of an X. Then it has mother here, mother here. So we have matrix means womb, but I think the key, signi the key signifier right here, breeding animal, we get that matter, yes, but let's put mother. Let's put mother right under matrix, matrix, matrix. So matrix is mother. Matrix literally is the womb. Literally the part is the womb. It refers to origin, a public register. Then we have mother here in the sense of a birthing, breathing animal. And keyly, key, this is, this is also key right here. Um, I think I'll put it under uh, matter right here. We'll put matter right here. Matter, one T, matter, matter right there. So Exodus. Now, where, where are we? We're in Exodus chapter 13. We're in Exodus chapter 13. You know that number, that number they love so much. You understand? 13 months of, of sunshine, right? 13 months of sunshine. Now, originally, now we're going to get it closed etymological brackets. Now we're going to get into the connotative. The connotative is the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, or however many. Um, this has like 8. 8. So let's just deal with this. The first originally, it says orig, dot, comma. That means originally the womb, uterus. The womb or uterus. Secondly, that within which or within and from which something originates, takes form or develops. So matrix is womb, the uterus, if you want to deal with it simply and basically, but the idea is that within which or within and from with which, that within which or it says within and from which something originates, takes form or develops or develops. Very interesting. Or specifically a, a dye or mold for casting or shaping. It's a dye or a mold for casting or shaping. Holy Spirit is, is just reminding me that, that verse where it says that to be conformed to the image of his son. Remember that? That we should be conformed. So so he is he is the the dye or the or the or the mold and we are to be conformed to his image in that sense and impression from which a large number of phonograph records can be duplicated so the matrix is that first original it's like the, it's like your original your master so even there's a link in this word matter with master in the sense that it's like the master is the master copy it's the master copy an impression from which a large number of phonograph records can be duplicated. Remind me of the scripture where it says that, 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 that from Christ and due to Christ, a large number of brothers, you understand, a large number of brothers. So he's the firstborn, you understand, but there's a large number of brothers who are, who are born after him and due to him and in a sense through him and according to his his image or his impression. Uh, in anatomy, it's any non-living intercellular substance in which living cells are embedded. So now we have this idea of embedding and embeddability, as in bone, cartilage, etc. B, the formative cells from which a nail, tooth, etc. grow. So and the matrix is the formative, the formative cells, formation, in formation. Fourthly, electronics, in electronics, matrix is a process in which 
several signals, several signals or signs are combined for transmission or recording and then separated for reception or playback. So the matrix is all that combined, almost like embedded, the idea of like embedded, like um, compressed, when something is compressed, and then it has to be uncompressed. Fifthly, according to geological, it says um, the rock or earthly material in which a crystal, pebble, fossils, etc., is enclosed or embedded. So where you find the crystal, pebble, rock, or whatever, you know, fossil, in that sense, enclosed or embedded. Sixthly, linguistically. So this is, this is how matrix is used in different, in different schools, in different studies, you know, in different schools, anatomy, um, electronics, um, linguistics. It's a main or independent clause. A main or independent clause is a matrix, like that key phrase. Like we say the phrase that pays, right? That key phrase. The seventh is mathematics. In matrix in mathematics is a set of numbers or terms arranged in rows or columns between parentheses or double lines. Hmm. Eighth, printing. In printing, a matrix is a metal, a metal mold. Matrix in printing is a metal mold for casting the face of type, for casting the face of type. B, it's a paper mache, plaster, or similar impression of type, etc., from which a plate, a plate can be made as in stereotypy, as in stereotype, a stereotype, right? Stereotypy, a stereotype. Interesting. We probably have to go over this again. This is just a, this is show you that we've been hearing about matrix, this is the matrix, oh, go on the matrix, the matrix, blah, 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 blah. But, but somebody asked you, what is matrix? How many of y'all knew that matrix is the womb? I mean, this is not a biggie, but how many, when I first even looked it up, I said, it's a womb. It made me look at the movie and everything a little bit differently. Even be able to qualify whether somebody really has a spiritual even insight or an intellectual insight or whether one is just talking, you know, like just out of the hype that everybody, oh, matrix, 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 matrix. You know, we hear a lot, of, oh, they're in the matrix. Oh, that's the matrix. Oh, this is the matrix. Uh, you know, but matrix is a womb. Matrix is a womb. Now, I could go a, a couple of, I could go into different parts of this study from here. But what I want to do is, is keep it on these first verses right here, which is part of this week's Torah portion, Reading and Feeding, the 16th, Belek Ek Egizeh, Be'ebrayist Ekwankwa Be'shalach, which means when when he let go or when he sinned. It can mean send forth in the Hebrew sense or let go in the Ethiopic sense, when the Israelites were let go by the federal government. You know, you'd be surprised. They're still holding on to a lot of you and a lot of we Negroes even today for a lot of the same reasons. That's what we call this spiritual Egypt. But now let's get this right here. Let's get these scriptures. Let's get these scriptures. So matrix occurs. Matrix occurs, right? Actually, I should have done the other way. Matrix occurs five times. Five times, right? Or 5x in the Bible. That's interesting. Remember the number five. The number five itself is the number of the matrix, the number five. The five is also the number of the hand. The five is the number of the hand, too. You see the hand has five fingers. You understand? Hebraically, yod. A yod is a hand. A yod 
in the in the Ethiopic is id, in the Amharic is ij. Basically, etymologically, linguistically, is still the same. Sonically variated, but still the same. It's the hand. So what's interesting is that the wound, that the number of times this appears in the King James Bible and the science of the matrix, in other words, when you look this up, and we'll try to provide some of the additional proof to, to give a little more um, information so one can get information, um, five times, that five is the number of the matrix and it's a number of, let's put this right here, it's the number of the creative, what's known as the creative hand. Five is the number of the creative hand. Now, we can make a ja or a yad, a yad link. And now, another interesting thing is that in these Torah portions in the book of Exodus, one thing that you no doubt will come across often is where Yahweh, our Father, is saying that the Egyptians are not going to let God's people go except God uses his hand with a mighty, not just any kind of hand, but with a mighty hand. Going to use a mighty hand to let his people go. And as it was in the beginning, or as it was then, in principle, it must be the same now. These people, the lost sheep, the Beit Israel, even the remnant, are not going to go forward, come out of this spiritual Egypt and mystery Babylon, save it is with a mighty hand and the mighty hand of Jah, of Yah. But let's go on. Five times creative hand. So it first appears in this chapter in chapter 13. So let's give you some of the chapters right here. Some of the chapters right here. There is, there is uh, Exodus, Exodus chapter 13, verse 12, verse 15, um, verse 19, and then we have numbers, numbers, two times in numbers, 3 and 12, 3 and 12, and 18 and 15, and 18 and, and 15. So the first place that it occurs in the King James Bible, let's qualify it, in the King James Bible, is Exodus 13 and 12. Let us read that right now, 13 and 12. We have it highlighted right here. It says, um, that thou shalt set apart to the Lord, to yod Hey wow Hey, to Yahweh, all that openeth the matrix, and every firstling that cometh of a beast which thou hast, the males, the males shall be the Lord's. The males shall be Yahweh, Yahweh's. Now, here the parenthetical is the firstborn is set apart. Now, remember, this is after, this is after the death of the firstborn of the Egyptians was the Passover, the Passover common, and the consequences thereof. Coming from the beginning, it says, And Adonai Egziyari Herlotu Subhat and Yahweh Jah spake to Moses, saying, Sanctify to me all the firstborn. Sanctify, that means make them set apart. Set them apart. Separate them. Set them apart. You understand? Know Set them apart to me, to I, all the firstborn. Whatsoever, whatsoever openeth the womb. Now here, in the second verse, it has a womb. Among the children of Israel, both of man and of beast, it is mine. So it's signifying the firstborn both of, of man, of human beings, as well as the animal or the creation, the animal creation. And Moses said to the people, remember this day. He said, remember this day. Don't forget this day. Forget some of those other days, but remember this day. Remember this day. 
in which ye came out of Egypt, in which you came out of Gibbet, out of the house of bondage, Barnet. What kind of bondage was it? Based on our research, yes, there was some, you know, making bricks, but niggas are still making bricks today, right? You know, but the, 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 the bondage was more a spiritual bondage, you understand? Was a spiritual and a psychological bondage, and once you are spiritually and psychologically bound, the body will follow. You understand? The body will be a follower. So they were in the house of Barnet bondage for by strength of hand. Notice what Yahweh says here in the third verse. By strength of what hand Yahweh brought you out from this place. There shall no leavened bread, no leavened bread be eaten. You shall not eat leavened bread because the leaven symbolic sign was a sign of malice, corruption, wickedness of heart. You eat no, no leavened bread. This, being puffed up, because leaven, it puffs, it, as the other show, puffs it up. This day came you out in the month of Abib, in the month of Abib, and that's also very important. In fact, Macy uh, says something to the effect of um, that, that, that the, the, the names are, are the matrix of what we are looking and mining for. The, you know, those, those, those hidden secrets are, are contained in, in these names. So even a name like a beeb, if one, first of all, a beeb means the barley. It's the barley harvest. In Hebrew, a beeb is the barley harvest. And that was, one can say, that was the, the spring, around the spring or so, uh, spring vernal, vernal equinox. That was around that equinoctial time, so to speak. But a B, we'll get into more of that. Let's let's ro roll this up to to verse twelve, and it says, and it shall be when Yahweh shall bring thee into the land of the Canaanites and the Hittites and the Amorites and the Hevites and the Jebusites, which he swear to thy fathers to give thee a land flowing with milk and honey, that thou shall keep this service. So this is a service. See, uh, Passover this year hasn't happened just yet, but this is a good this is, this is a good teaching. This is preparing us how we should be prepared for the season upcoming, roughly in, in April, in April time. Check our our calendar and check the calendar for that. Thou shalt keep this service in this month, seven days, that seven again. Thou shalt eat unleavened bread, and in the seventh day there shall be a feast, a feast to Egeziahir or to Yahweh, to the Lord, if you please. Unleavened bread shall be eaten seven days, and there shall no leavened bread be seen with thee, neither shall there be leaven seen with thee in all thy quarters. Put it away. Put it out your house. And thou shalt shew thy son in that day, saying, This is done because of that which Yahweh did to me when I came forth out of Egypt. And it shall be for a sign to thee upon thine hand and for a memorial between thine eyes, that Yahweh's law may be in thy mouth. Where is his law? His law is in our mouth. So that's even from ancient Egypt, there was the opening of the mouth. Because you have to remember that Moses and, and, and the Israelites, they understood within the context the Egyptian cultural context, like we understand majority of things in a Eurocentric Anglo-American context as well. Just a point, a point of notation. So it says right here, it says, um, where's the verse right here? It says, it says, and it shall be for a sign. It's a sign upon thine hand and for a memorial, a remembrance where? 
between thine eyes. Which, wh where is between our eyes? The so-called third eye is between the eyes, in your mind, in your frontal lobe, in your consciousness, that Yahweh's law may be in thy mouth. For with a strong hand hath Yahweh brought thee out of Egypt, with a strong yod, with a strong yod. Remember, yod, yod is the number five, too. And five is the matrix, is linked with the matrix in many languages. Let me just make that point. In many ancient languages, it's, it's linked similarly. Different languages, but a similar, a similar mathematical value. Thou shalt therefore keep this ordinance. You shall keep this what? It's an ordinance. You see, we keep these orders so we don't be out of order and in disorder and confusion and chaos. We keep the divine order. This is our divine heritage. Thou shalt therefore keep this ordinance in his season from year to year. So we be always prepared. And it shall be when Yahweh shall bring thee into the land of the Canaanian or the Canaanites, the Canaanu, as he swear to thee and thy fathers, and shall give it thee, that thou shalt set apart to Yahweh all that openeth the matrix, and every firstling that cometh of a beast, and which thou hast, the males shall be Yahweh. So it's interesting how Yahweh is establishing something with the responsibility squarely on the males. Some might imagine sexism, but there's no sex. It's like today we look at the male, the black male, and we say the black man has to step up. You understand that the black man is being a deadbeat dad, a deadbeat, a deadbeat man. He's not living up to, he's not doing what he should do. He's not being the man, so forth and so on. And, and a lot of that is true. A lot of that is true. But we have to look at the big picture and where we all are in that big picture. And Yahweh is saying the same thing to the Israelites right there. And that was the first step of the ancient black Jews or black Hebrews manning up, you understand, manning up, you understand, to have a covenant and be in covenant with the almighty God, the creator of heaven and earth and all that is therein, that is a big and an important and an honorable responsibility. And so that is why the males particularly are single. One of the reasons why the males are particularly singled, singled out. Now the next verse is at verse 15, so let's just go up to that. And every firstling of an ass thou shalt redeem with a lamb, and if thou will not redeem it, if you will not redeem it, that means if you won't buy it back, what happens? Then thou shalt break his neck. If you don't buy it back, if you don't redeem it, which means to buy it back, then what happens to that ass? You understand? That donkey, that jackass, the jackass neck gets broken. It's interesting. And all the firstborn of man among thy children shalt thou redeem. And, and, and all the what? And all the firstborn, the bequir, you understand, of the Quran of the man, of, of human, of, 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 of human being, among thy children shalt thou redeem, shalt you buy back. Now it's interesting, remember they're coming out of an ancient Egyptian context, and this is why a lot of it hasn't been seen. I, I think a lot is due to the, the, the racist and the racial dis-ease of the European mind regarding black folks and black culture that has even um, poisoned some of their great intellectuals and really great researchers and, and scholars. And we've read and studied a lot of their books, and a lot of them are, are, are really bright so-called individuals, but an eclipse comes over their mind when they have to deal with the real racial dynamic 
of these are black people that they research and even in ancient Egypt and because they 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 don't recognize and admit the truth you understand it, it really it really shows you that 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 um how can you say it shows you that 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 disease you know that that disease I think Frances Cress Welsing in her ISIS papers she she speaks about the psychology of white supremacy very much so in that document and I, I can't really do better than her research really puts a lot of what I, I want to say into its proper context but be that as it may um, there's an interesting connection with the fact that it says, and every firstling of an ass thou shalt redeem with a lamb. It's interesting that exchange right there because we know the ass or, or the donkey, you understand, was a particular type of, of suit, of set, you understand? And, and, and by extension, you know, by extension we can extend it, you know, to some other types and other cultures and religious types some even say the Baphomet looks a little bit like a, a dog or a donkey or something like that. Those are goat, you know, kind of this, uh, a kind of a, a hybridization. But it's interesting that when we look at some of the sacrifices or some of those um, ordinances, if we can look at it in this cultural context, we can see what Yahweh was reversing. He was reversing, you know, the... Um, the, the lack of manhood among the Beta Israel, you understand, during that time, how, they, how the men even got effeminized, you understand, and the women, in a sense, were out front, almost like it is today. And so Yahweh was instituting these ordinances, you understand, that if they were faithfully followed and kept, it would have brought the Israelites, remember, they're going through the world, they're about to go through the wilderness, take the long journey. In other words, take time so that the mold could really set if they were willing, if they were willing. But it goes on to say, and it shall be when thy son asketh thee in time to come, saying, so here's where it's part of the Haggadah in certain, um, um, in the Jewish, European, white Jewish, in their Passover celebration, have a Haggadah, you know, which they read um, like a, a, a order of the ritual. And there's a part where the children partake in it, which is based actually on this area of Scripture, where it says, And it shall be when thy son asketh thee in time to come, saying, What is this that thou shalt say to him? By strength of hand, Job brought us out of Egypt from the house of bondage. And it came to pass when Pharaoh would hardly let us go, that Adonai Gizyarihir slew all the firstborn in the land of Gibbet. But both the firstborn of man, both the firstborn of man and the firstborn of beast, therefore I sacrifice to Yahweh all that openeth the matrix. Here we have this phrase again. Therefore, I sacrifice all that openeth the matrix, being males. So if one opens the matrix being a female, is she, is she, um, is she, is she in that sense, sacrifice all that, oh, is she part of that? No. It says being male. But all the firstborn of my children I redeem. So you see the difference right there. So, so that the child would not, that male would not be sacrificed, he redeems it. See, it was to reverse the, the, the spiritual bondage and psychological bondage by right of ritual that the Beit Israel had to endure. It's, it's like if you look at niggas today, what would it take for niggas to get their right mind again? You, you know, could they, they think they got, they, they, they don't, they don't, <laughs> they don't know what they don't know. But it goes on, verse 16, And it shall be for a token upon thine hand, and for frontlets between thine eyes, for by strength of hand the Lord brought us forth out of Gibbet, out of Egypt. Now, this is, uh, there's one more 
there's there's one more. What was it? Was it 12, 15? I have 19 here. I have 19 here. It's not 19. I don't know why, why it told me 19 there. Okay, put a question mark next to 19. I'll go check that out. Refer to my um, reference on that. Let's see. Let's see what we got going on here with this uh, matrix thing. So when we looked it up, we found it five times. And the, the next time, the, the, the third time here, we don't have it. If we have to stand corrected, five is still, five is still the number of the matrix. Whether they have it translated five times using that particular word, that's in question right now. We just noticed that for a moment. We like to do this because we like to be as accurate and correct as possible. No, it's actually 34 and 19. It's actually 34 and 19. My bad. I stand corrected on that. Um, so it's actually not, not, not 15 and 19. It would actually be, uh, let's try to do this like this. It would actually be 12, uh, 15, and then 34. 19. So it'll be 34, 34, chapter 34. So I got to put this in my note. Chapter 34, chapter 34 and, and 19. We're not there yet, so we'll hold off. So we have two, actually, in this one chapter, chapter 13. In chapter 13, we have two, 12, verse 12, and verse 15, where we have matrix. Now, what's the significance of this in light of all that we have heard or talked about or been exposed to regarding the matrix? Let me give you a hint. Not, not just a hint, but a kind of an indication. Notice in Revelation, if you will, in Revelation, there are two um, prominent um, women in, in, in the book of Revelation. There is, um, there is New Jerusalem, you know, New, there's that particular woman who, 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 who we have in, um, who gives, gives birth to that man-child. Some say that's a type of Mary um, from a Judaic perspective. One would say that's a type of Israel. Um, but then we have New Jerusalem, which seems to be the same, uh, along the same the same energy as that woman, you understand, who's clothed in the sun and standing in the moon with the 12 stars on her head and who, who gives birth. And we see that prophetically being um, imperial Ethiopia giving birth to Lich Teferi or the man-child Rastafari, our kinsman redeemer. Then we have New Jerusalem, which, as I said, that's along the similar energetic type, but these, these two women, which I see as being prophetically in the scripture, the same, the same woman or mother type, in other words, Israel as the bride of, 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 of God, you understand, in a sense, is, 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 is the church in a New Testament kind of, um, Un interpretation, in a New Testament interpretation, you can see how these harmonize, in other words. But this is contrasted, on the other hand, by the Babylon. Babylon is called in the scripture what? She's called a mother. You see? She should be called a mother something else, but she's called a mother in scripture. Babylon. Ba Babylon or Babylon, right? So if she's a mother, and if symbolically the church in Israel also is a mother in that sense, then we have two mothers, and then we have two matrixes. Didn't see that one coming, did you? Two matrixes. See, people said the matrix, the matrix. Which matrix? What is her name? 
Next time they talk about the matrix, ask them, what is her name? What is her name? Which matrix are you talking about? There's obviously there's more than one matrix. You understand? Because, see, here's how we know. We have to go back to the beginning, to, to Moses' first book. You see, it's the first book. It's like if somebody's writing a series, right? You don't go back to the first book because that gives you some of the formative ideas. And in the first book of Moses, known as Genesis, some play on the word, on the title and say genealogy of Isis, which is that's that's clever. You understand know genealogy of Isis. It says this. In chapter 3, in chapter 3, chapter 3, verse 15, it says, And I will put enmity, telotinate, hard feelings, animosity, hatred between thee. This is where Yahweh or, or Yahweh Elohim is speaking to the, the, the serpent the Ibab, the, the, the serpent, and it's saying that I will put enmity between thee and the woman and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head and thou shall bruise his heel. Now here's what's very interesting right here because this is what's clear that now the Eve, Haywan, the mother of all, what? Living, contrasted. You know, remember there's, there, there are certain contrasts here. If Eve is the mother of all living, right, and according to, according to what Scripture says right here, then the serpent has a seed too and also becometh a mother, must, must be because they're, they're being equated. See, we get this idea that the serpent, uh, you know, we get this idea that the serpent was a male. You know, there's often that kind of idea. Even if it's written here in the scripture, you have to understand ancient, ancient ways of writing. You know, ancient ways of writing. Even though it might be overarchingly projected by the male aspect, you, you know what I mean, because of the nature of things and the nature of people. Right here is clearly showing us almost two mothers. Two mothers. You know what I'm saying? It's almost like two women two types, and even in the book of Proverbs, we have these, like the two types of women. We have wisdom, you understand, know the Sophia, the, the Hokma, you understand, know and then we have foolishness or the lack of the Ahokma and the Gnostics, but we have the foolish woman, you understand, know the wise woman builds her house on what? Seven pillars, right, seven, seven levels, on the seventh, she builds her house on the seventh. The foolish woman tears her house down with what? With her own hands. She tears it down with what she does. So it shows us the contrast throughout the Metaphe Misale or the book of Proverbs, the book of examples, the book of similitudes, the book of parables of King Solomon, but actually we know it comes from an earlier an earlier time, like much of what Moses has put here, is based on the accumulation of knowledge and the right ordering of what he was initiated to and familiar with throughout his experience in Egypt, as well as in the priestical order of the Medeanites as well. So in Egypt being of, of Joseph's order, or a similar order as Joseph, which is the Hebrews, and then with, um, with uh, Jethro, who we're going to deal with, y'all willing, next Shabbat, um, the Medeanites. So we have two matrices, two wombs, two openings. Now, I would like to just kind of cut to the chase, you know, on a certain level that, you know, that... <laughs> Your origin matters, right? Where are you registered? What public? You understand? Are you with John Public or, or are you with that public? 
You understand? Are you of Jah's public? You understand? Or have you been born? What womb have you been born in? Mother. Who is your mother? Do you recall the, the, the psalm? Just thought about the psalm here. Just to show, show a couple of other um, resonances of this here. Where it speaks about and Zion, and they shall say, Zion is their mother, that they shall say in this prophetic time, they shall say that Zion is their mother. How interesting, how interesting is that, that Zion is their mother, that they will be born in Zion. So Zion in this level, even in, 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 in the... In the the Psalms also reflects this same idea. Now, what I found to be most interesting in our writ et hymenot, or what we call the Orthodox faith, but indigenous writ, writ et or ritua hymenot, is in some of these um, dar sanat. Let me find the particular dar sanat, and we'll probably have to pick up on this. In, in the next uh, portion of this teaching, there is um, there's the yeah zelater tzelo, which means continual or constant prayer. There are a certain set of prayers that um, the Orthodox faithful of the Ethiopic Church regularly pray, and if I'm correct, there are ten. There are ten such um, regular prayers. And um, the first one here, it begins off, Besamah Waterman says, Kedusa Haram Lak, Yezawata, Hello, Begeta Ye, Be Yesus Christos, Te Immer Te Meskel, Fitena Mella Sonatin, Shoskize, Amatabalo. In my Adonai, my sovereign, my master, in Jesus Christos, te emerte, te emerte meskel, in, in the, for lack of a better word, miracle, the, the miracle, but at the root of that word miracle is knowledge. So if you look up that word, the Ethiopic word of, for miracle, if you go to the root, the root means a type of knowledge, a type of knowing, or a kind of gnosis, or an epigenosis. In the miracle of the mescal, of the cross, what's often translated as cross, but it more implies the idea of branching, branching, um, boundary as well as stability is a cross. A cross is a boundary and stability. But the idea of mescal in the sense of a tree is branching. When a tree grows, it branches, in other words. Just a, 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 little, a little more nuance to some of the, the inner meanings in, in the words and in the name that help to take the, the word to its higher dimensionality of understanding and therefore open up, like, it's like the, the psalm writer says, that you have set my feet in a broad place, in a firm spiritual place, because I can see the stability of the spiritual reality around me. It's like in the Matrix movie, when, when Neo, the new one, the, the newcomer, when he was able to see the actual Matrix around him, he could actually see the Word, how the Word created all that is, and therefore was able to have mastery over, or, or mastery in that sense, not over it, but in it, in other words. So it says, Begeta ye be Jesus Christos te emerte meskel, in my sovereign, in my master, or my Lord, in Jesus Christos, Yeshua ha Moshiach, in the miracle of the cross, simply, fitain my face, my panim, my my pineal, my face, and melasonete, and my complete humanity, so net, so man, 
or human, soul net, humanity, soul net team, my humanity. Some interpret that as personality, but it goes a little bit deeper than just personality, just one strand of it. Sourced or shorst gize three times amataballo, three times. The idea basically is when one does the sign of the cross. But the sign of the cross at a at a higher level of comprehension is is the beginning of in faith is the beginning of the Merkaba. Actually the Merkaba is, is begun. Though it looks like a cross is actually is actually a, a a square, a cube, but that a little bit a little bit more on that to come. These basics are are uh, important to understand. But as I go forward to the next part, which is the part that, th that's the opening. That's like the opening part. The an, it says, Gizyabi herin, Sulemamen, Andamlak Behonu, Baab, Walid, Behmen, Fesel, Kedusa, Sim, Nizu, Liu, Kubura, Serui, Behonu, the sustenet wine, the salase yamen kuna yetamat enku, the latte ya seit anen kedhalo, the zitcha benate ya the beta Christiana fita kume ya kedhalo, the zihim miskere mariam nat, the zihim alema the wad yawum alem erswan amba. Now, in this right here, but first before we before we give the turgum on this, let us do this right here. Let us put the Ethiopic, the Ethiopic word for 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 matrix. Ma, h, e, n or n n n. M A, uh, I put the K H. Um, for right now, I have to put T Z for this particular unique sound. It sounds like the E, eh, but it's more of a E eh, E. Eh. It's, it's like a T and a Z instead of a T and an S. But for most Ethiopian speakers, they say both those two letters that I'm referring to similar. All right, Machten. You might you might read it as Machten, but really Machten. That's interesting, Machten. Um, but um, Machten, Machten is the womb, right? In in Ethiopic, is the womb in Ethi the womb, right? The womb. I say womb man. Now, there's a particular passage right here saying. Um, because of because of faith or amen in the sustainer in God in Yahweh Egiziavirin Sulemamen Andamlak the Mohonu and 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 the one who is the the, the one God the Ab in the Father the One in the Son the Memphis Kedus Sim in the name of the Father the Son and the Holy Spirit Nesu and Liu in in that which is pure special honorable Terui, uh, Terui. It, it's, I think it's a to say, uh, if, if I'm correct, to say say good, a type of Teru, 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 good, um, exquisitely good. Be Honu, and they which are be Sostinet, wine be Salase, in in threeness or in. Shalase in Trinity, Iyamen Kuna, I have Amen. I have have subjective, subjective faith, admittance, um, confidence and trust on the Amen, on Jesus Christos is the Amen. Then it says, Ietematenku, Ietematenku. And I am Maten, Maten. When I used to read this and try to translate for myself, um, 
I, I even asked other Ethiopians, and most didn't really give me a good answer. Some couldn't even give an answer, really, to what does that mean. It, it was curious. They would look at it, and even though I'm like, don't you know this book? Oh, don't you? It's like, yes, uh, it's old Gittes word. It, it's come from ancient language, you know. Like, okay, okay, yeah, but doesn't anybody? Unfortunately, I couldn't go to priestesses. Pre, not priestesses, but priestess. Priest. They, that's how they say priest instead of priest, priestess. Anyway, couldn't go to the priest to really ask them um, what it really means. So I just did what I would do. I searched it out. And I kept coming across to be conceived or born. And then, I mean, this is why I picked up because I would look at the word mahit, iete mahit, iete maten, maten. Yeah, this, the ch is not there, but sometimes that get contracted because you have, you have a ma and then you have a ch, mach, mach. Sometimes this get dissolved and become maten. It gets it gets dissolved and everything. So here it's saying that I I have faith in my interpretation that was I am born because if the machaten is the womb, then iyetamaten ku means to be born. Now with this whole idea about opening the matrix and the connection of matrix to to the womb and how it appears in this week's parsha or sabbatical portion known as Beshalach, Beshalach Be'evrayist, Ba'amarinya Be'lek Ek Agizay, when he let them go, when Pharaoh, you understand, when the Afra let them go, you understand, the Pharaoh of the underworld, you understand, because there were, there were two things, there's always two things going on, at least. There's the physical thing that we see, and there's the spiritual reality that we don't see. You, you know what I mean? So we have to, you have to keep that, you have to keep that in mind. Musa and Haron, they definitely o overstood that. They overstood that reality. It wasn't just, it wasn't just what, what you saw physically with your eyes, you understand? But it's also the unseen, that which is unseen, which reminds me of the, um, Hymenot Maseret, which says that, that we have faith in the one who is seen and the one who is, the one who is seen and not seen. In other words, he is seen, he is able to make himself manifest, and he's unmanifested. He's able to make himself unseen, you know. And this is, this is really interesting because that's a reality, you know, that's a reality. In fact, Yahweh means or Ehya Shara Ehya, I am who I am is the English Anglo way of understanding it, but really in the language it means that I live and I be what I seek to be to live in a sense. It's 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 it's, it's kind of strange in a sense from a Western perspective because it doesn't make too much sense from your 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 Anglo Saxon perspective. It almost means I live in and I I I I live in I, I am being alive and am being that which lives but becomes almost like I I do what I need to do to live. But not from remember the Almighty saying that everything we all are living actually in him. We all are existing in his <laughs> You know what I mean? In in his in his thing, in a sense. But 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 where did that all? You, you see, that could drive people kind of crazy. So let's first map out where we're at right now, and some of those other things will be more at least um, comprehensible on a certain level. Um, but the idea right here, which is the first prayer. And I see this word also occur, the root occur elsewhere. Now, I had mentioned this before to you all in uh, the videos we put up for some of the new books in the, in the Rastafari Book Club. And we're going to pause for a moment, um, let you take some of this down, and then we're going to continue, hopefully continue with this right here. But it's in this book right here. You remember I showed this one, the Amharic Dictionary? Remember this, the Amharic Dictionary, 
right? The Eisenberg, the Eisenberg and Hard Dictionary, right? Um, th this is from 1841, the 1841 dictionary. Um, you know, languages go through certain kind of changes, even though it keeps a lot of it in there, but a lot of stuff becomes, I, I can say, becomes somewhat embedded in the language, so you have to unembed some things. Um, but this dictionary is good because it has mots in it. It has the word mots in it. And mots in it. And it says a uh, mots in it. Then it has te mots in it. And then it gives some examples. So for mots in it, it goes to a uh, mots in it. And it says to commend. To commend. Right? Recommend. To deposit as a trust to deposit as a trust, to put to an asylum. <laughs> that, that's interesting there, to put into an asylum. Then it has uh, Romans um, XVI 16 and 1. It says, to appeal to the feelings of a person. To appeal to the feelings of a person to conjure or entreat him according to Genesis XLII 21 or Genesis 42 and 21 because this, this was by Eisenberg and the available like Bibles and Amharic at that time in 1841 is what he used to compile this giving reference to some of the older um, some of the older uh, like the Abu the Abu Rumi um, Habasianus Haba um, uh, version of the Bible from the Gutters. Tematsene, New Testament mainly, Tematsene says to appeal to a person, present or absent. Tematsene, Temaia Tematenku, to appeal to a person, present or absent. To recommend oneself, to recommend oneself to another's protection. That's interesting. Now that that makes a very interesting connection. But at that time, I didn't have I didn't have access to this um, 1841 uh, Reverend Charles William Eisenberg um, um, dictionary of the Amharic language in two parts. So it then give us Exodus. Um, XXI or 21 and 13 then says, Yemi matenbet, where may take or find refuge, where one may take or where one may find a refuge. Acts XXV 25 and 11. Then it says, Bekeshar te matenyalo, which is to say, I appeal to Kaiser or Caesar. And verse 12, it says, Bekeshara katematene, if thou appealest to Caesar. Now, it, it has here um, vid east, like I'm um, going back to, I guess, old Ethiopia or old Ethiopic. It has machitene, machitene. So in the guttas, in the guttas, it's machit. And that, which is interesting. Now, if you, if you hear some of the meanings there from the first one, to commend, recommend, to deposit, but that is using the that's like a, a that's using the verb the verb I think intransitive, while the verb transitive, something already acted upon, it says to appeal to a person to recommend oneself into another's protection or to take refuge. So simply put, right now, just to wrap this, wrap this up, because um, there's much to think on and much to meditate on and just to cross-check and verify, that the ch as if, if you heard this prayer, in fact, I, I would probably have to translate this. In fact, this is coming soon because I'm doing this now. I'll probably have to get this book this um, this uh, translation of the Zawatir Elot 
out there so ones can get more familiar with some of these these core um, Ethiopic prayers of early Christ, Christian uh, early Christianity because um, there's a lot of metaphysical sense in a lot of these these little books these little archaic things if one can comprehend if one is obeying and being obedient and faithful one will see and recognize a lot of truth in this because here it's an appeal to the Trinity it's an appeal to the one God the God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit as the one God. You understand? As the one God. Then it, it says, um, um, my enemy, it says, Elate, my enemy, Satan, and it could the hollow. I deny you. My enemy, Satan, you I deny. The zich, the inate, in her, I deny you, in her, in my mother, the inate, the beta Christian seat in the presence of the house of the anointed ones, or, quote, church, ume, my standing, or standing, standing, doing this while standing, not sitting, but standing, because, you know, the righteous, you understand, the righteous shall stand. It could the hollow. I deny you, still speaking concerning Satan, the adversary, because we've, we've come out of the world, in that sense, into the church, the true church, the true family, that, 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 that household of the faithful ones. And it's in that womb, in a sense, that we are born, you know what I'm saying, that, that we are born. So, so that's a connection right there. In other words, with the Christian idea of the matrix from the early church preserved here in Ethiopic, in the Ethiopic writings. But just to conclude this translation, it says, Lezihim miskare, and for this, my witness, Lezihim miskare, my witness, Mariam not. In other words, and for this, my witness is Mary. But see, it wasn't just speaking of of um, Kedistin Gilmarium in the sense of, of, of like just the picture, but it's saying that the church is Mariam. The church has that name, which is a name from the heights, because Ariam means a high, it's an abstraction, it's the highest abstraction of the heavens. It's actually the abode of God is called the Ariam. It's the highest, furthest star. And you can say, not even star, but for lack of a better, you know, for lack of a better, um, you know, a better reference. But it's, it's the arium is the, high, the higher heights. So when this is said, it's not just, oh, to the picture, like you see people to the picture. No, because the picture is symbolic, of course, it's the Glamardian. You said, but now the, 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 the name Mariam both belongeth to the mother of our Lord and Savior, our black Lord and Savior, as well as to the church. This is one of the reasons why so many churches from even antiquity had a name, had a, had a name that had something to do, you understand, with Mary. You understand? Because as Mary gave birth to the Savior, in a sense, the church becometh like Mary. You understand? Like Mary, and it gives birth to true Christian. So the true Christian then openeth the matrix, in other words. So it concludes right here by saying, Lezihim miskare Mariam not. She is. My witness to this. Bezihim Arlem, and in this world, in this Arlem, in this dream state, in this world, Ben Wadiyanyawum Arlem, and in the world to come, in the Wadiyanyawum Arlem, Iswan, she, she, Iswan, she herself, pronoun, Amba, 
Now, Amba is interesting, seeing where we're going in the Torah portion, reading and feeding. Amba is a flat top mountain. Now, for all the folks who are like into a lot of the, you could say, I'm not going to call this, not conspiracy, it's, it's basically the, the research about extraterrestrials and so forth and so on. Even close encounters use a kind of Amba type mountain, a flat you know those mountains that have that tabletop, the tabletop mountains like Debradamo, the Ethiopia, um, the Ethiopia. You understand in Ethiopia, um, it says it's Swanamba Metegia Adarge Ikadhalo, and she, flat top mountain Metegia refuge. Metegia is a refuge. It's like in the Old Testament, there was what was known as refuge cities. There were cities of refuge. And if you look at the Old Testament idea of the cities of refuge, and you look at the New Testament idea of churches, you'll begin to see that the church, for those who came out of, 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 of corrupted Yehudaism or Judaism, you understand, who were Jews or Hebrews, Hebrews themselves, they almost like, like um, Old Testament criminals or ones who were accused of a crime because they were accused of worshiping a man. They were accused of worshiping our black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who was killed or who was um, so-called murdered as a criminal. You, you, see, you know what I mean? In other words, they were associating with somebody of, to some folks, of an ill repute, similar to we as Rastafari when we associate ourselves with Edomawi Haile Selassie. They say the same thing. You understand? And they say, don't preach in his name and all these other kind of stuff. So be it. Iswan Amba Metegia Darge. I make her like a flat top refuge mountain fortress, it could hollow, I deny you. In other words, still Satan in this first invocation is being, once it's set up in the Father and in the Son and, and the Trinity, then it's a total denial of Satan. You understand? And it's a reaffirmation. You understand, of Mariam, both the person, the mother of our Lord and Savior. You understand, our Lord and Savior took her flesh, her black flesh, and became as one of us, you know, as well as the metaphysical reality of the church, which is on a, uh, is, is on a fourth, fifth, and higher dimensionality level, Yovas. So when people think that our ancient the ancient folks were so primitive or out of step. Some of them perhaps were, but many of them knew the secret and they knew about the matrix long before the Wachowski brothers stole uh, our black sister Sophia uh, Stewart's ideas concerning it. So my brothers and sisters, there's more to come on this topic matter. Um, Exodus. This is chapter Exodus uh, 13. Um, I don't even have room to put it up here. I want to put the 13 up here. I feel I feel it's missing that 13. So I'll put the 13 right here. You know what I'm saying? Like a B, right? 13. Exodus 13, opening of the matrix. So more to come, my brothers and sisters. Shalom Rastafari.